Hello, this is Josh Patel and today I'm bringing you another biology lesson. Today we will be doing Chapter 3, Cell Structure and Function, Lesson 2, Cell Organelles. So our key concept for today is eukaryotic cells share many similarities. And as we know, eukaryotic cells are complex cells that me and you are contained of, which they contain a nucleus with membrane-bound organelles. And these are the opposite of prokaryotic cells, which don't have membrane-bound organelles. So cells have internal structures called organelles, and they're like organs for us, but they're cells, hence the name organelles. So one organelle is called the cytoskeleton, and it has many functions. It supports and shapes a cell, helps position and transport goods, provides strength, assists in cell division, and aids in cell movement. So the cytoskeleton is like basically just fills up the whole cell except where the other organelles are. So it just it's like a space filler kind of. And it just gives it its shape and it just fills it up and supports it. And the cytoskeleton is in something called the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is basically the cytoskeleton, but it just, the cytoplasm just fills up everything. It's like some plasma stuff that just fills up everything else. It's just like a jelly thing. And then the cytoskeleton is in it, which helps it like be sturdy and it stand, withstand stuff, keeps it shape. So several organelles are involved in making and processing proteins. So the cell makes protein. So the nucleus stores genetic information. So this right here is the nucleus and it stores genetic information. It's the middle of the cell. It's like the center and it's like the, it's the brain of a cell, which is another nickname for it. And then inside the nucleus is the nucleolus, which does stuff with RNA to make proteins. It like processes RNA to make I mean, not proteins, it makes ribosomes, and ribosomes make proteins. So the nucleolus, which is the middle of the nucleus, makes ribosomes, which is another organelle. So many processes occur in the endoplasmic reticulum to create finished proteins. So the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short, surrounds the nucleus, and it looks odd it's just a bunch of stringy things combined together that's what it looks like i'll sh we'll show you images of them later i'll show you an image of a cell and I'll point out all the different organelles so the endoplasmic reticulum helps create proteins so it surrounds the nucleus and it's the home to ribosomes which are little black dots that and they're also an organelle and these black dots combine amino acids to make proteins. So there's two types of endoplasmic reticulums. There's a rough ER and a smooth ER. The smooth ER makes lipids while the rough ER has ribosomes and makes proteins. So several organelles are involved in making proteins. So ribosomes, which live in the rough ER, link amino acids to form proteins, and which we learned in a video earlier on carbon-based molecules, that amino acids are the monomers of proteins. And so ribosomes link them together using peptide bonds to form proteins. So vesicles are another organelle and they are membrane-bound sacs that hold materials for transport within a cell. So vesicles transport materials throughout the cell. Other organelles have various functions. The mitochondria, which is another organelle, makes ATP, which is energy for the cell. The mitochondria is called the powerhouse of a cell, and it looks like a vein with a bunch of folds inside of it. It makes sugar into energy. Another organelle is a vacuole, which is a fluid-filled sac that holds materials such as water, sugar, and starch. And sugar and starch are a carbohydrate, which we learned about in previous video. 
So vacuoles are just like basically a big pool of water in a cell. And in plant cells, they're very large, but in animal cells, they're very small. They're large in plant cells because plants need a lot of water and it helps it maintain its shape by it keeps in the water so the water doesn't just like burst the cell. So lysosomes contain enzymes to digest material materials like it basically eats away old organelles and it just it like recycles them basically so it uses enzymes which we learn are a catalyst but in a cell to di digest material and those are lysosomes so then we have centrioles then we have centrioles which are tubes found in centrosomes so centrioles are these churro looking figures here and they aid in many tasks. They help divide DNA, which helps to reproduce or help the cell divide. And they form scylla and flagella. And scylla and flagella help cells move. Some cells have scylla and flagella on the outside. So flagella and scylla help it move. They're like little strings or strands that push it through whatever it's in. So plant cells have cell walls and cytoplasm. A cell wall provides rigid support. So these are only in plant cells. So cell walls provide rigid support. That's why when you eat like carrots or any type of vegetable, you hear like a crunch when you bite into it, like for carrots and celery. And that's why it's also stringy and they like stick together when you like rip it apart kind of. And then Chloroplast convert solar energy to chemical energy. They're like little solar panels in a plant cell. So chloroplast are little green things in plant cells that convert solar energy into chemical energy. That's how plants make their food for glucose. That's how they make sugar for their food. And these are found in the leaves. That's also why plant cells are, that's why plants are green. So now we're going to take a look at plant cells and animal cells. So these are the two different types. There's a plant cell and then it's an animal cell. Plant cells are usually rectangular. This one's more hexagonal, but it's usually rectangular. And then animal cells are more circular. So they all have certain features like cytoskele cytoskeletons, nucleus, endoplasmic re reticulum, ribosomes, Golgi bodies vesicles, mitochondria, vacuoles, and lysosomes. So if you see in this picture, this vacuole in a plant cell is way bigger than these small vacuoles in the animal cell. And the plant cell also has chloroplast, which are these green figures, which make energy. So we're basically just looking at the shape of things. So as you can see, these are the nucleus because they're like the center and they're bigger. And the inside is the nucleolus where they make ribosomes. And then, as I said earlier, surrounding the nucleus is the ER. So this is the rough ER and this is the smooth ER. You can kind of tell which one's which by this one has a bunch of little dots here, but this one's kind of a little cleaner. So you can infer this is the smooth one and this is the rough one. The smooth one makes lipids while the rough one makes proteins because the rough one has ribosomes in them. See right here, ribosomes, and it points kind of to the rough ER. So then we have the Golgi apparatus, which organizes, sorts, and delivers proteins or anything in the cell, basically. This we didn't really learn about. This wasn't in the PowerPoint, so you got to remember this one, too. It basically just packages things and sends them. So it's like a post office of a cell. It packages and sends things different places. So it'll take like proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum and send them somewhere else. Or it might even send things into vesicles, which will send them somewhere else. So then we have the plasma membrane, which is the outside. See right here, plasma membrane. And it's also another name is the cell membrane and it's the outside skin like it's the skin of a shell skin of a cell plant cells also have a plasma membrane but they also have a cell wall 
animal cells do not have a cell wall. So cell walls basically just protect the cell even more and they help keep its shape with all the water they have. So the two things plant cells have are chloroplasts and cell walls, which animal cells do not have. So these are basically the shapes of the different organelles in a cell and the difference between a plant and an animal cell. So that's it for this lesson, which was chapter three, cell structure and function, lesson two, which was all about cell organelles. Our, my next video will be on chapter three, cell structure and function, lesson three, which is all about the cell membrane and the cell wall. So hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned a lot, and if you missed anything or you need to review it, please go back and watch the video over again. Good luck in your quest in biology.